We all need to learn from our next guest. He says we're biologically wired for natural happiness. James Baird is the author of Happiness Genes, Unlock the Positive Potential Hidden in Your DNA. Thank you so much for joining us. It's my pleasure. I love this idea that mm -hmm. it's not about what's happening around us. We can control how we feel inside. That's the idea. Well, how do we do that? <laughs> well, <clears throat> first of all, you need to have some sort of a definition of what happiness is. And the way we approach, of course, everybody's got their own idea of what they think happiness is. But we uh, carve it into two areas. One is external, sure. which means that it comes from anything external to you, such as uh, acquiring things and pleasures and things of this nature. And all of these have external circumstances, which means they can change at any time and often do. Well, like some of the stressors that we talk about now, people having financial problems as we go into the holidays. Turkeys are more expensive. People don't have jobs. How do you put all of that away and still say, I'm going to be happy? Okay, that's a perfect example. The other type of happiness that we talk about and the one that we're <clears throat> considering as being genetic happiness is the, one, the feeling that you get when you do an altruistic act. Yes. such as a good deed, act of compassion, and what have you. We all feel good when we do that, all cultures at all times, and that's why we say it's genetic. The problem is we can't do it all the time because, as you said, there's so many other things that affect us externally in our workaday world. So if we do have genetic happiness, the question is why aren't we happy all the time? Right. Well, the reason is... <laughs> is there's always a reason to everything. The reason is it has to do with our genetic priority. Hmm. Uh, we have a priority of genes, and the ones that rank highest in priority are the ones that we had in the beginning. We call our evolutionary primitive genes. These are totally selfish genes. They're genes to preserve a person, their food, their survival, and what have you. Right, you talk in the book about caveman and the instinct and to survive. Yeah, good, good point. That's the highest priority, and that's still there. And you can see it today all the time in the newspaper about acts of greed, violence, wars, et cetera. Right. So that's still there. Uh, the altruistic genetic gene is a lower priority gene, genetically. I mean, we didn't design it that way. That's evolution. When we meet people, you know that there are people in a given situation, some look at it, glass half empty, and some glass half full. So if it is in our DNA, are we stuck with what we've got, or can we change it? We can change it, and that's the whole point of the book, basically. Uh, so as I just mentioned, the higher priority caveman genes, lower priority altruistic genes. We How do we change the priority? turn that tide and alter it a little bit. Well, the way we do it is by something, the new science called epigenetics. It's a very hot science. It's mostly used now in medicine. You can treat cancer with it, Alzheimer's, and different types of disorders and diseases. But it's a way of changing the expressions of our genes. Whereas the point is, genes are not destiny. Okay. We used to think that way. But epigenetics shows that that's not the case, and we can change the expression of our genes. So is it about that positive visualization, for example, in battling cancer? Is it about trying to work harder at doing more altruistic things? Uh, all of that, but you need to have some sort of a program or modality to make it simpler. So that's what we have in the book in the form of our 28-day plan. And, but what it all comes down to is getting more control of your consciousness being more conscious and being conscious you can change the programs in your subconscious which is where your instincts are your caveman instincts you can physically change those biologically change those by becoming more conscious when you say be conscious is it literally telling yourself you know what handle this i'm going to just go at this with a positive attitude kind of like that uh, the mind, as I'm sure you know, is divided into an unconscious or subconscious state and a conscious state. Mm -hmm. The unconscious state is 90% of it, and it consists of our basic instincts and our life experiences, basically. And that's playing all the time. It's like a tape player. And those are the causes, the stream of thoughts that run through our minds constantly back and forth. That's your unconscious mind tape player. So the Conscious mind is the creative mind, the small mind. It's the one that we can direct. 
the unconscious mind directs us. And most of us, most of the time, are under the direction of our unconscious mind. That's why we're doing these things we don't want to do. So it seems like a complicated matter, but you say in 28 days we can do it. We have to get the book and find this out so we can all be happier. Jim Baird, well, thank, thank you, you so much. much for coming in. I love the idea. The book is called Happiness Genes. If you want to learn more and just be happier yourself, check out the website, happinessgenes.com. For a link, of course, log on to our website, wgntv.com slash midday. And next in the Midday Fix, some gadgets.